Hey guys, okay, so with um, version uh, 2.62, uh, the surface snap has been uh, just updated a little bit just to be a bit more robust. So uh, I'll show you how this all works. So uh, let's just uh, go and snap that object and it's going to pull these guys up a bit or down. Uh, in the past, the surface snap, if an object was below it, wouldn't, uh, wouldn't behave uh, as you'd expect. So now, oops, uh, you can see that. Uh, so the snap is working beautifully, so really good for if you need to stack a whole lot of objects, like so. So nice fast way, nice fast method. So real fast way of uh, stacking objects. Okay, so uh, one of the other new features that's in uh, the Dark Arts version uh, 2.62 is uh, there's a new uh, multi-cut feature. And um, I'll show you what we used to have in the past when you used to apply deformers. Um, so say we've got this object here, and this object here, this one here, and so I'm subdividing these, and I'm just going to apply a bend deformer, and I'll show you what, what happens when you've got subdivisions, which when they don't quite match up. So let's just uh, create a deformer, so bend deformer, and so if we move this out there, that all looks okay, and we'll just rotate this around. And so. Uh, one of the issues that you get when using a deformer or something that manipulates the, sh uh, the mesh geometry and the subdivisions don't all match up is you get these nasty little gaps that can become real apparent, especially depending on how far you stretch things. So, new to the uh, Dark Arts uh, 2.62, I'll just do all that. This is just a nice little feature which. Um, so in the modeling and multi-cut. So what this does is it's, um, it'll ask you to select a reference object. So the reference object is uh, the object that it all uses as boundary for cutting. So in this case, I'm going to stick the, the biggest object. Go select reference object. And if I select all these guys, then I might just say that I'm wanting maybe 10 cuts. And I can choose a cutting plane, so X, Y, and Z. And I'm going to go cut selected objects. And what you'll see, and if I get to my front view, is that all these cuts uh, appear perfectly on these objects, so they're all lined up. So basically what that means if you're deforming or animating an object like this, and I'm just going to create another bend deformer, rotate that around, yeah. one more time, okay, uh, oops, okay there we go, and as you can see as we, as we move this out, I'm just going to zoom right in. You can see that because the subdivisions are all matching up perfectly across the objects, now we're getting perfect deformation, which is really, really handy for uh, when you have deforming you know, surfaces, you know, whether it be a door with a window pane in it or, or whatever. But uh, yeah, the new uh, multi cut tool, really, really handy, really good. Uh, nice way of just cutting through multiple objects. Okay, so moving along, uh, we've also uh, added just a, uh, just under. Uh, utility, there's just a quick option for those of you that need to output the green screen background. So it's just a, it's a fast little utility, it's uh, nice and handy. Um, one of the other things that has been added to the toolset, and yeah, let's undo that, and delete those all off, and let's hide some objects that I've got. Go to a bit more of a neutral background. Okay, so uh, we've got these objects here. Uh, there's just a new uh, randomizer tool that's been added. Um, I had a whole pile of plates that were stacked up, sort of thing, um, plates and cups, and uh, they're all different colors, so this is a nice little randomizer just to uh, shuffle the object positions, just so that all, all the objects were nicely uh, randomized, all the colors were sort of like shifted between uh, all these color plates. Okay, so uh, the shuffle object positions, so it just takes each object's position and just yeah, uh, randomizes between them all. Okay, um, one of the other nice little things that has been added is, um, I was going to zero this out, another little feature which um, was added in uh, 2.6 is if I freeze this object here, you can see I've lost my transforms now, and um, say if I wanted to get my um, my translation uh, transforms back, especially if you're doing like dy dynamic simulations where they really do like to have um, the, the proper coordinates, uh, I can just right click on this, some text field and it's got a modeling and there's a little retranslate button and you can see what it does basically is it re, um, re puts the translation values in so it's a nice way of just unfreezing the transforms or getting them back 
So if I zero that out, you can see how it's back on our um, origin again. So really, really handy feature. Uh, you can obviously select multiple objects and it'll iterate through all that for you. Okay, um, one of the other handy sort of things in the dark arts, which has been around for a while, is um, if I have a whole pile of objects, which you can see about not 16 here, I, I can actually spread them out quickly by just putting a, a numeric value and then the access that I want to spread them on. So you can see I'm just putting X in there, or I put uh, maybe 2Y. You can see that's just a nice fast way of spreading out objects, so uh, quite handy. Uh, there is just another added feature that uh, comes with 2.62 where you can actually put a radius value in there. So say if I wanted, um, say, 10, uh, or like a, a radius of 10, and if I put, follow that by the letter R, what that'll do is it'll put all those objects into um, so radius for me, or into a circular sort of uh, form. And um, so I'll just delete these off and show you what happens when you have a cube, just so you can get an idea. And so I'll duplicate that quite a few times, like so. And I'll select all these objects and I'll just do the same thing again, 10 You can see how they all get rotational values as well. So just a nice, quick, handy sort of feature. Um, what else have we got in here? Uh, one of the things I haven't actually shown you guys before, which is a real handy sort of tool, it's, it's unbelievably handy. I use it uh, for camera moves all the time, is the um, animation drift tool. And basically what this guy allows you to do is just um, carry on animation and drift it along. So I use it quite often mainly for uh, camera moves and that. But uh, I'll show you roughly what it does. So say we've got this object here and it's, so I'll just get all the values, and it's moving quite fast. So maybe in 10 frames. It's moved over here and to maybe about there. Okay, so it's moved quite fast. So if I play that back now, see that it's speeding along. Okay, so one of the views of the animation drift is um, basically what, what it allows you to do is it allows you to select like uh, channel keys. So I'm going to select these. These are up here on the channel. Um, let me just have a proper look at my graph editor. So you can see at the moment we're just getting an ease in, ease out. So I'm just going to make this all linear. No particular reason. It could be whatever you want. Uh, so I'll play that back again. So you can see this is speeding along. Nice and quick. Okay, so now I'm wanting it to uh, just uh, just do a, like a bit of a drift at the end. So I'm, I'm going to select uh, frame 10. And with these keys, uh, with these uh, selected in the channel box, I'm just going to go to the animation drift. And I'm going to say that I want this to move at 10% of its uh, current speed. And I want that to be over a uh, 50 frame duration. And I'm going to execute the drift. So one of the nice things that we get is we get this beautiful looking uh, drift happening right here. So let's just uh, play this along and see what we're getting. So very, 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 um, I can't say how handy this is for just doing uh, little camera drifts. Um, really nice technique. We're getting a nice drift going on and then it could be like, okay, so maybe from here we want to speed the sky up again and we're going to maybe move it in a different direction. So let's just go. Okay, we're going to move you over here by 10 frames. And maybe down a bit. Maybe about 10. Okay, so let's have a look at this. So you can see what one of the beauties of the way that the script works is that it keeps a nice linear form between um, point A to, to point B. So um, I'm just going to play this back again. Let's just see what we get. Beautiful drift. Fast and stop. Okay, so maybe we want to do another sort of uh, 50 frame drift uh, and maybe at 10% speed. Uh, or actually, maybe we'll go just a little bit faster on this one. Maybe we'll go 20% speed. Execute that. And once again, you can just look at these keys, and while this is selected, I can be like, ah, oh, maybe that does look like it's a bit too much. So, I mean, I can play this back. So, we've got that nice drift going on. Speed drift. So, that looks cool. But uh, maybe I just want this to be like, maybe it, uh, maybe a bit slower, maybe it's 5% speed. So once again, selecting the, the keyframe that I want the drift to happen on. And once again, I'm going to go 50, and I, I think a 5% drift would be nice. Okay, so we're going to execute that. You can see our keys have changed. And we're just going to play this back. Beautiful drift. Beautiful drift. And as I said, this works beautifully for uh, if you're doing camera moves. Okay, anyway, uh, there's... 
there's going to be more tutorials coming out, a lot of tools to show you guys, but uh, here's, here's a few more for you. Um, have fun. See you guys.